Let's talk about uh, Real Housewives of uh, New York. So had you kept in touch with these women? Not totally, but a little bit. Like when I had the show, they would come on, and that was a great bridge, the talk show. So thank you for that, mm -hmm. because it was a great bridge. They didn't totally hate me for not having spoken to them. They needed you then. Right, so yeah. thank you right. for helping me with that. So there's lots of, uh, we saw some arguing, there's fighting going on again. How come y'all can't just get along? No, we do get along a lot, and there is fighting. It's kind of, when was the last time you hung out with seven women, like in a closed environment? I choose not to. Right. I mean, <laughs> but I promise you, you would be arguing in a way that you wouldn't imagine if you were in a pressure cooker. If you, it's just, you just would. Right. So, but when you went back, you knew that this was going to be, obviously there's going to be fighting and stuff like that. And, and did you, did, did you go in since you've done it before and they've been there, they've still stayed there and, and you're now entering, as you said, d are you approaching this a different way? No, I'm always the same, but to be honest with you, it's not sort of gratuitous arguing and it's not outlandish drama just for the sake of it. And that's why I left because I felt like the whole franchise, some people who come on as new housewives have a preconceived notion of how they're supposed to act. I'm supposed to throw your mug at you and you're supposed to do something to uh -huh. me. And I was never like that on the show and I don't think that the show is like that this season. Women are going through a lot. There's a mm -hmm. lot going on with infidelity and divorce and people have experienced deaths and I have my situation. And then there's a lot of levity and humor about other things. So it's an interesting season. It's, it's a better show than I think that, that it was. So you wrote this book, I Suck at Relationships, so you don't have to. Ten rules for not screwing up your happily ever after. And uh, New York Times bestselling author. So here's what you do. You say, uh, tell women to stroke men's ego. Um, and you, you have in here say, so you're supposed to tell um, men you're so strong. Like when they're lifting things? or what, Why do you say that? In general, I think that women tend to emasculate men and you have to really, we think that they're stronger than they are and you have to really make them feel better about themselves. Because we women are hard on men, they really are. I mean, I think that women and men don't really necessarily understand each other. Women are much crazier than men would even imagine and men are much more stupid than women could possibly imagine. <laughs> they're much simpler creatures than us. Wow. Yes, I don't think that they're not intellectual and that they're not intelligent, but they really care about sleep, the remote, the dog, poker, drinking, and you know, mm -hmm. you not being on their jock when the, you walk in the door at night. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, that's not true. They would like you to be on their jock, but <laughs> they don't want you to like want to talk about when they w <laughs> when a man walks in the house. He doesn't want a woman to be like, let's talk about this thing. Uh, I'm sorry. I no. yeah. That's all right. No, we're just getting a good shot of someone that's re responding to everything you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so now, each one, it's so large. Yes. This is when you go to a man's apartment, obviously. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, and they you look want, at the apartment. Like to, men want you to think of their apartment as very large. And you go, it's so large. large. Yes. I see. You understand? Thank you. Thank you so much for reinforcing I've made the right choice in life. And. Um,